Hello everyone, today the main point of this video is going to be getting ExpressLRS inside a very tight spot, like in a micro. Maybe you're building a, a DJI 2S Whoop and you want to slide a micro between your naked Vista and your main board, don't have much space in there, or maybe you've got an HD0 that you're building and you need to also squeeze a little board in between there, or you've just got a tiny micro where there just isn't a lot of space. Stick a, a little receiver, even though the receivers that we can get for Express Express are tiny. And there's probably one last scenario. Maybe you're using the super tiny cube-based antenna and you're breaking them. I haven't, but I've seen many reports of others breaking them. Well, this is why we have this receiver. And we're also gonna take a look at the new Beta FPV Lite 3 radio. That's Lite Radio 3 Pro. Just a quick look. Look at that little tiny guy. That's my pinky finger, by the way. And I do have one of those that we're more familiar with. This happens to be made by Flywoo. Um, well, I'll just set them down here on the desk so you can get a look. They're very, very similar size and shape, of course, but we need to weigh them up and then we need to measure them vertically as well. So I'm not going to compare these two receivers because it's already been really well done by ATX Airborne. So I am going to uh, put a link to his video right here in the top right hand corner. And if I can't put it up there, I'll put it in the video description. He does a really nice job, different environment. All those different things are really important if you're really wanting to dive deep into this stuff. And he does a really nice job of putting his video together and he's got some really great editing skills. On my scale, the flat antenna weighs right at half a gram. And surprisingly, the cube antenna comes in just a touch under that. The height of the flat antenna is 2.91 millimeters versus the cube antenna looks to be over five and a half millimeters. So quite a bit difference. So they're calling this the ELRS Light RX flat antenna as noted here. Uh, with it, you also get two pieces of heat shrink. You get your wiring you needed to solder this up. It comes in a little bag and you do get a beta FPV support card and user manual. I've got one of these right down in here. Now this is less than ideal, but it's not quite what I described to you in the intro. You know, it's not inside of a whoop sandwich between boards. I wanted to uh, put it in this because one, this had an uh, FR Sky RXSR in it and I wanted to take it out. So this was a good opportunity for me to do that. Uh, this isn't ideal as far as range. Obviously you're kind of between two carbon fiber plates. The stack isn't very tall and you've also got some metal posts. For range purposes, you would would want the larger receiver especially if you want to go far out and you'd want to have an antenna that you can mount proudly outside of whatever your flying vehicle is these are for squeezing in those super tight spots and you're probably watching the video because you want to know how far can you get or in my case what can you go around but before we get to this, we got to take a quick look at the Light Radio 3 Pro. This uh, just arrived, and you can see it's just got the screen up here. And at first blush, when I saw this, I thought the screen was going to be detachable. It is not. Uh, there is a little switch back here that, according to the manual, that is what uh, you, you turn that switch in order to be able to change the function of these. I think they go to trim functions or something like that. Maybe it's this one. I haven't done it yet. I have charged it. Of course, it's got USB-C. I did also test it to make make sure it would work as a, a, a human interface device on a computer. I have not tested this in a mobile capacity. I have gotten that question once of making these radios work with an Android phone. Um, but I don't even have an Android phone to test with. But at any rate, uh, so everything that you normally have on the on the light radios, you would find except for, you know, the fit and finish has changed ever so slightly. So um, these buttons back here are just... Uh, uh, Two position buttons or switches and these are three position rockers right here uh, but one thing I wanted to show you is I'm gonna just try to hold it in my hand but you can see how I can just easily move that stick see how this one's not moving this gimbal is quite a bit stiffer so I think I mean it's not real stiff it's just noticeably stiffer you know this one moves nice and easy both ways this one this way but it's up and down I might have to take it apart and either lube it up or maybe take a look at the spring tension maybe the spring tension is making it a little bit stiffer than I expect uh, the soft touch is kind of we've seen that in previous iterations as well uh, this external area out here kind of fooled me at first I thought it was a different material uh, but after kind of you know rubbing my fingernails and on it it's it's still the same material it's not rubberized or anything it's just that they've textured this area which I think they've done in past radios as well let's go ahead and turn it on here yeah. 
So as you can see on the screen, it's got that rolling. The refresh rate uh, between my camera and this screen aren't synchronized. So you're seeing in the recording that scrolling. I'm looking at it and it's not scrolling. And I will say for such a tiny screen and my old eyes, it's pretty crystal clear at arm's length. And so I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, if you're like me and you uh, don't have a young eyes that aren't perfect anymore, that's a nice little thing to have there. Uh, of course, I haven't dove quickly into this. I'm going to bind something. Actually, I'm going to build something and bind it up to this. But I did want to introduce this. The One of the other big features that this radio has is that it can accept a nano module here in the back. Uh, so you can see here, my it says EdgeTX supported. I have not looked to see if there's a release specifically for this radio or not. Uh, so you might want to do that research on your own if you're in a hurry. Um, but this tells me that this is the Express LRS internal version because you can get this with uh, a non-Express LRS. And that non-Express LRS is the CC2500 chip. So it's not a form one. You don't get all those different protocols that we oftentimes talk when we talk about multi-modules. It's only the CC2500 chip that's in there. The Nano Bay that it does support, they list a whole bunch of different ones on their website as far as the different Nano Bays. But pretty much I would say if you're getting the Express LRS version and you also want to transition some other quads that aren't on Express LRS to this radio, uh, getting one of those uh, XJT or iRange Nano modules uh, should slide right in there. This does have a uh, 1S 2000 milliamp battery in it. Uh, maximum power on this particular unit is 250 milliwatts. So if you're looking for one watt, which seems excessive to me, I've never gone above I fly at 250 for the most part, and I don't even bother changing it unless I'm doing a test like I am uh, in this video. But uh, yeah, people want what they want. I don't have a problem with that. I just don't always understand. <laughs> the gimbals are Hall sensor gimbals, but like I said, you know, I've said many people that I really don't feel a difference between sticks on from one radio to the next unless they are the CNC metal gimbals. Uh, those gimbals I can tell a difference with right away. Uh, pretty much all the other gimbals, especially when they're new and they're fresh, they, they feel about the same. Uh, of course, if you know me, you know that I've used the Jumper t light for a very long time, so the form factor is something I'm quite comfortable with. That's something else that you need to decide. I don't want to go on too long about this. I think I've shown you some of the highlights. If you're wanting to see some stick can or what I think about this radio after using it for a few weeks, uh, please let me know. There are some other things in here, like there's a, a DFU mode. I think you press. I saw it in the manual, but I'm not looking at it now. I think you might press one of these two buttons down there. I think those are buttons. Yeah, they're definitely buttons. You press one of those two uh, to get into DFU mode if you have any flashing problems. So that's good. You've got a back out if the flashing process doesn't go great. Uh, this does go in there quite nicely and it doesn't fall out, at least in my handling so far. Uh, I, I need to fill you in about this switch and what more it actually does. I haven't toyed with it enough uh, to tell you about the switch fully and completely. But I think the first thing I'm going to have to do is take it apart and see if I can't get this gimbal to loosen up. As you can tell from me moving it around, it's not unusable the way it is. So I just suspect something's a little bit tighter in there than I want it. You know, I like loose, sloppy stick ends, uh, but we can always make those adjustments on our own. But that's the radio. I don't know if you're curious about this, you know, it says XF3 up there. This is an old iFlight frame, and it's one I actually enjoy. It kind of has that alien, micro-alien style, but it's real narrow-bodied. So, uh, at any rate, I've had this quite a while, and this camera, ooh, the camera that we're looking out. That, it's not a bad camera, it's just, it, it's probably th two plus, maybe even three plus years old. Um, but... You know, I didn't get too fussed about it. So obviously we've already gone around uh, the backside of one of my neighbor's houses. And we're, we're not going to stop there. Uh, I've got the LQ up there that you could take a look at the link quality. I am getting telemetry call out. So if telemetry is another one of those points where you want to have that uh, read to you possibly by your radio or used in some other sort of manner, you're going to want to go to a full size receiver that has the amplifier for tele telemetry. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to go back around behind my neighbor's house. Again, I'm sitting in my backyard real close to the house. Now we're going across the cul-de-sac to my other neighbor's house. And yes, everyone knows they've all been made aware. And you see that my video went out there for a few frames at the very least. But I never lost control. Of course, LQ is flashing at us up there saying, Hey, 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 getting close to a failsafe here, buddy. What are you doing? But didn't failsafe. Just telemetry callouts. Now my rapid fire is trying to resync. 
Uh, let's move forward a little bit more. I go for a secondary pass of that same. Well, let's take a look at the pool. Yes, the pool is coming along. It's so close. It's actually closer than what you see here. Uh, the pool cover is on. The electricians just finished up today in hooking up the plumbing and stuff. This space we're looking over here is going to be like an outdoor eating and relaxation area. Uh, we'll have like a, a tabletop and kitchen stuff and we'll grill out there and there'll be a TV and a ceiling fan and all the different things you could possibly want in an outdoor living space in the Midwest. Yes, I know. Uh, this, instead of moving, I think is kind of where we went. My wife was really wanting to move to a house with a pool. And after five or six years of looking at those and me saying, no, 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 I'm going to die in this house. Um, she decided, well, let's make it our own then. I thought we already had, but at any rate, uh, so you can see the pumping equipment that's sitting over there. That's actually uh, a little bit different now that it's a, uh, plumbed and wired in. It's not plumbed, it's wired in, excuse me. So we're going for another pass. Same thing that we already did previously, but want to give you a secondary look down below that first neighbor's house. We're down below grade. So we've actually got the ground between me and where the quad is at that lowest part. And if we go around my neighbor's house video, yeah, I'm gonna cut out a few frames, go completely black. Uh, Rapid Fire is doing all it's can to maintain. By the way, I am flying a TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano, and I am running, as you see in the top right-hand corner, max output, which should be 500 milliwatts. So I can technically, with this tiny little receiver, outfly the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano with this flat antenna receiver. Again, I would encourage you, especially if you're interested in more data, ATX Airborne, he did a really nice job in his videos. And quite honestly, he's got some edit skills that make me jealous. He has learned some things about how to edit that I would like to learn, but I just don't know if I've got the will to, but it sure looks nice. So uh, at the very least, you can take and behold his video editing skills and then take in that data that he's got recorded on the same receiver. He actually does a comparison uh, between two different uh, Express LRS receivers, the ones that he, did, he doesn't use the Flywoo one, but he uses a cube antenna and he gives a nice breakdown and it's a different environment. And so those veterans know that in, as environments change, so does our video reception and so does our control link. So uh, another environment, another sample, I would highly encourage you to go take a look and I will put a card right up here. No, I'll put it over here. <laughs> uh, to his video if I can. If not, I'll link it down in the video description. So in my left hand here, I'm holding that flat antenna in case you were wondering. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see stick cam or you want to follow up to this uh, Beta Light Radio 3 Pro, I can sure do that, but please let me know in the comment section. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.